welcome to tonight's episode of Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel. And as always, I have a very special guest for you, Jerry Joseph, celebrity trainer, actor, and community advocate. He'll be with us for the next 30 minutes, so stay with us. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Beyond Focus TV allows you to discuss contemporary topics affecting the Caribbean people on both the national and local level. The show features informed guests who offer insight, debate, and evaluate various issues. Beyond Focus TV builds on the station's mission to provide useful information to the Caribbean people in New York and abroad. Beyond Focus TV, where our viewing audience can get educated, informed, and empowered. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel. And like I said, I have a very special guest for you, Jerry Joseph. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me, Lydia. Appreciate you. Well, it's great to have you. We, we heard from... Various sources, you know. Jerry does big <laughs> things. Jerry's in the community. Right. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. Right, so right, right. We finally got Jerry in this. I'm here, I'm here, I'm right here. here. I'm glad to be um, here. So before we get started, I always kick off with my hot seat question, which mm. is who is? So who is Jerry Joseph? Well, Jerry Joseph is a father figure. Jerry Joseph is an entrepreneur. He's a role model to the community. Um, he's a world global icon and continue to keep growing it and changing people's lives daily, um, every day. Um, Jerry Joseph is one of the first generations Haitians to be an entrepreneur and take that forth to a different level. Um, yeah, and continue to keep growing. I love it. A lot of big <laughs> things. I love yeah, it. And yes, it, it's yes. great to, to see that impact. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of let's talk about, you know, how this all got started. You know, first generation Haitian, mm -hmm. being first generation Caribbean as well. We know mm -hmm. we have our own set of... Yes challenges that I always say when you have immigrant parents right uh, and we'll, I'll have these talks with my non-Caribbean friends or even mm -hmm. like if you have black American friends right, right, right here it's still not the same I'm like right. when your parents moved here the extra layer that they pump into you because they almost have that expectation they came to this country so you better not mess up because man listen we we pave the way yes you get reminded right and I'm like why do I keep getting reminded of this 100%. But it shapes you. It did. It does. Every day. Um, I'm not only Haitian, I'm also French. So my dad is Mar from Marseille, south of France. And my mom is from Port-au-Prince. So I have two different uh, backgrounds, speaking French and speaking Creole as well. Right. So you know, that pressure. You know the proper, you right. Get, I know the, the proper uh, lingo of speaking. So, and, and etiquette is big on both sides. But. Uh, getting back to your question, shaping me throughout my whole life, the pressure, you mm -hmm. know, you, the background, you have to be a doctor, you got to be a lawyer, you got to basically own multiple businesses. Um, and I kind of felt my way just gearing towards the opposite side. Um, even though I was always an a, a student, went to college, master's, bachelor's, still did the whole Traditional the, the, the route. Traditional route, because it. And in reality, you need that in order to basically shape you for this world. And I thank my family every day to this day for continuing to allow me to be the person that I am right now, sitting here. But I kind of just didn't want to continue to live that legacy. I wanted to be more innovative and creative. And doing that allowed me to shape me in my own aspect so I can create a different generation continuation for my child because the at the end of the day we're always looking at what motivates us my family motivates me every day um, giving me life mm -hmm. so to have that opportunity to continue to keep growing and them showing that hey just because I'm not wearing a suit and tie doesn't mean that we don't have the same values and the same morals it's just that I just want to be more extra creative. Or that you're not as educated. Or that you're right. not, you don't have the right. credentials. Right. They'll think because of X, Y, Z. X, Y, and Z. This guy has tattoos. He's, you know, he's living off the edge. And he's just going, not going with a plan. You but know, you have more education than a lot of the people walking in. Listen, the this, this lifestyle is, it's not given. You have to basically work for it. And I was never given... Um, opportunities in my life to where I got to where I am right now. I had to work every day and bust my butt twenty four seven. Even when I didn't want to do it, even when I was so tired. And that's 
that's the real moments. Right. And you got to always reciprocate that and remember and keep that in the back of your pocket because when things happen in life and you need to pull that card out, it's either going to break you or shape you because pressure is privilege for me. And that's the reason why I keep pushing. It's a different frequency. So that's why I allow myself to continue to keep embarking and changing and motivating and just inspiring people every day. I live life as an opportunity because mm-hmm. a lot of people don't get the chance to sit here or have these conversations. Absolutely. Right. And you touched on something just like pressure is a privilege. Yeah. That when I, got, I mean, I got that tatted on my on like, me. <laughs> when you don't feel like doing it, like I'm big in fitness. I've been in gyms for my teens. And this is going to date me, but it's 20 plus years yes. of working out. And I've had moments where you don't feel like it, you don't want to, or, and it's not to sound away, but when people, like, I love my carnival costumes, and when they, you can't tell, like, I'm not a super showy person, mm-hmm. but carnival time, I show out. I nice. wear my feathers. Nice. And people are like, oh my God, your body's on point. Yes, because it's those 6.30 a.m. runs. Yes. I'm sacrificing. No food after a certain time. It's discipline. Yes. Consistency is this, key. You have to do this, but you don't want the work. Yes. And then you're like, oh, but I'm fit. Well, you, it's fixable. Exactly. Mind you, unless you have a medical condition. I'm like, I'm not. If there's really something limiting you. But I'm to like, be honest with you, I just feel like those are still excuses because to piggyback to what I used to, I, I did a New York City marathon without even training. No preparation. The company said, hey, Jerry, this is when I was working a nine to five. Jerry, you're the fittest person in, in the, the group. We want to tr- we want you to run a marathon. Okay, I'll do it. My my mindset was like 26.2 miles, never trained a marathon. How can I be able to push myself? How much time did they give you? How much notice? <laughs> Listen, they gave me like a day notice. No way. I swear to God. They noticed. Because they bought the registration. They bought now, the registration. And now they want their they like, we need somebody. Correct. Jerry, you're the fittest person in the group. Do you want to do it? Sure, I'll do it. And... And my, when I told my friend that runs marathon, he says, Jerry, you don't even know what you're getting yourself into. Like, do you even, you can't even prep your body. You don't have the time. But it was all mental. It was all mental. I locked in. I remember what I had on. I had Air Max sneakers at that time. And running an Air Max sneakers from marathon 20.6.2 miles, you do not want to. I advise people do not ever do that again. Um, How long did it take you? It took me four hours. Four hours and a half without even training. The, the, the pain, my quad exploded on the 15th mile. Uh, a lady that was working in the, at the time took a broomstick and massaged my quad to bring it down. And I was limping. The momentum of the but band. you were going to finish. I was going to finish because I was determined. And I, and I saw myself on TV. I caught myself just saying, oh, it's a big screen, you know. It's different. But you have the band cheering you on. You have your friends at different checkpoints. My friend is texting me like, Jerry, you're doing a pretty good job. You have... You're doing really good. Keep going. Don't stop. And it's like, okay, I'm, I'm doing this. Once they close these gates, <laughs> UPS trucks has your stuff. You have to go. They're playing that song, It's Up To You, New York. You're giving people high fives. But once you get to that, that stage, it's all locked in and focused. Like, literally zoned out to the point where the last person that gave me a high five is not even giving me a high five anymore. You're on your own. It's you versus you now. Like you versus you yeah it's actually like to be honest with you it's like i had a reality check i said oh snap this is different yeah so as i get to the miles and i'm burning up and i'm like man but people are cheering you you get to the finish line and the only thing i can think about is just i gotta get i gotta finish i gotta finish to get that gold medal was like just rewarding like man i did this without even training we'll hold that thought we're gonna take a quick break We'll be right back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel. So, Jerry, you're telling us about your experience. One day, barely, you know, a not normal <laughs> amount of notice right. for anyone. Right. See, my women's group that I'm affiliated with did that with me a couple years back. We do mm-hmm. a run called It's the 500 Men Making a Difference. Oh, dope. It's a 5K. 
So it was three miles. They call me the night before on a Friday night. Mm. I already had two drinks in. Mm. They're like, um, tomorrow morning. They're like, you run on a regular. You you this morning. Truthfully, mm-hmm, I ran mm-hmm, four and a half mm-hmm. miles this morning. That's like baseline, just maintenance mm-hmm. running for me. Um, they're like, you're the fittest one we know mm. in the organization. Can you run tomorrow morning? I'm like, I would have liked to know this before I had tequila and everything else. But yeah, I'll be up. <laughs> I'll be up. I'll do it. Knocked it out. Clocked in my time. Held it down. That's you can't compare. Can't. Three miles to twenty six. Twenty six point two. Twenty six point two. And I think it was thirty miles because we had to go back to the UPS truck to get our stuff, so we had to walk extra miles for that. So it's probably thirty miles, literally. But that's that's what makes you great. Did doing that open up opportunities for you? Doing that opened opportunities in my mind because at, at the end of the day, I kind of just created a whole path. I was like, you can't tell me anything anymore because I did something without just unorthodox. Like I'm just doing it. And then I kept doing it and doing it. And I, as I noticed that my life has been always just do it. Don't think about it. Don't worry about being judged. Just do it. And I kind of just kept on paving that platform. Just keep doing it. Little by little. One step at a time. One step at a time. And then here I am. <laughs> you know, it's just you wake up and you, you have a vision. You write it down. You continue to keep focus on it to the point where it's like concrete Mm -hmm. it takes a while to break concrete so i don't like to walk on eggshells when it comes to like a vision i always want to make sure that it's literally like stone cold like cold hearted to the point where it's like you're driven to the t and that's why i continue to keep manifesting and praying and continue to keep pushing. Amen. Yeah. I, I'm a big believer in that. Yeah. Tell us about some of your celebrity clients, if you're able to share who you're you know, with. Some of your roster, if you I, can. Of course. I mean, I love all my clientele. Um, it's, it, it, it's just different personalities. I have the cast of power. Um, I have Lala Anthony. I love her to death. Notori. I have Kiana Madeira. Um, I actually trained Kiana for a movie role that's coming out in February. It's called Perfect Addiction. So it was my first time to actually be a trainer for the movie on set to get her right within six weeks. Um, big budget. Don't mess up. That's all you have to read. Don't mess up. And like I said. She can mess up. She can mess up and make you look bad. Because right. the thing is people forget when you're a trainer or doing coaching or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I, 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 Unless I, you're there babysitting them or putting the food in their mouth. You could give them the best meal plan. With, 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 with her, we already had locked in without even locking in. Because I already said, you're going to be the best shape of your life. And if you look at the Instagram, six weeks from day one to day two to day three, it's preparations from having a slimmer waist, a tighter stomach, having six packs. Within proper dieting, twice a week, well, two times, two times a day, five days a week. So working at two times a day, five, five days, days a week. week, whether it was me or whether it was the stunt coordinator, because you had to do boxing as well and kick, Muay Thai kickboxing. So we, it's, it's just a different level. Every As you grow, your body needs to evolve. We're, we're going to have a conversation about getting my ass. I, I've always been stuck <laughs> at a four pack and I've had different people just mm-hmm. tell me that's my body mm-hmm. because that little, you know, that no, little no, no. donut right there. You got to push yourself. Don't limit yourself. You're a beautiful person. Don't limit your body. Whatever is inside is going to predict what's the outside is going to look. Forget about what the outside look. Inside. The chlora intake. What you eat is how you're going to look. Abs are made in the kitchen. Of Abs course. Abs are made in but the kitchen. It's a sense of balance. It's a, bench, it's a sense of urgency. How bad do you want it? Mm-hmm. Can't just say, oh, you know what? I'm just doing it right now because no. vacation time. Girls going to Vegas. No. Every day. You should be doing something because we eat every day. You need to do head abs every day. And there's different theories where people are like don't do abs every day. It makes you bulky. You have a thicker waist. Depending on the body type, I always assess my clients, and I give them effective exercises, not exercise. And always remember, you're not working out. We are training. There's a difference. Working out, you can work out, but you're training to be the better version of you. And that's what like my mission is basically about. To give people opportunities to be a better version of themselves. I see surpass you. I'm you in your body. 
taking you to the next level without you even knowing it. When I first see you walk to the door, mm -hmm. I'm assessing you from jump. How are you standing, posture, confidence, energy, and also, um, what do you really want? Because, what? you know, you can tell what a person really wants before they step in. Hey, did you bring your did you bring your journal? Oh man, I forgot it. Okay, cool. Did you uh did you write your program down for when you work out without me? I think so. When you get these ah uh, Okay, let me know when you're ready. You're supposed to already be logging your food. Right. Have an idea of at least not if it's not on a micromanagement level, but at right. least have mm -hmm. An idea of what you do. Like, mm -hmm. I love intermittent fasting. I'm a huge mm -hmm. fan of that. Yes, it I works, do that too as well. It works perfect for me. Now, mm -hmm. it's, like, I don't even feel it. Right. Like, you know, at first, yeah, it kicks your butt a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to increase it. You know, do that challenge. There's not just the 16, 8. I mean, maybe I want right. to do, like, you know. Exactly. Push that time a little bit. Push it, man. There's nothing that you cannot do that's a restriction unless you're doing something illegal. Push yourself to the T. Give yourself that pedestal no that's that's great so when are you when you're not training mm -hmm. you do some acting yourself yeah so you know so crazy i love like i said i love all my clients lala Natori, woody um everybody that i've trained lavelle these guys inspire me i could just watch what they do and it just motivates me to do it and i've always wanted to to get into that type of side me and my brother, back then, we used to wrestle. We used to create narratives in our heads <laughs> every day. Oh, I'm going to hit you with a steel chair. Oh, somebody's coming out right now and steal the belt. Oh, man, you lose. Oh, no, this is what happens. And we just run with it. We have so much fun. We never, I never thought about doing that. But as I look at a role model like Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, how he took wrestling and went to acting and became the biggest actor that there is. But still be himself. Yeah. That's beautiful. I want to do that. And I think you are. You're doing <laughs> that. So it's going to be Right. Great. I mean, actually. Hold that thought, yes. though. Hold that thought. We'll be right back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. So, Jerry. Yes. So many good things. So exciting. You know, working on your projects. You got, you got a lot. Yeah, I got a lot. You know, I'm, I'm basically traveling all over the world now. I'm creating the Jerry Joseph Experience. Um, the Jerry Joseph Experience is a big, huge platform that allows me and my clients or my peers or whoever it is to connect. If you make a fist like this and we connect like this, boom, these are two J's connecting right here. And we're Same creating Joseph. the experience. <laughs> exactly. And I have to give credit to one of my clients because they said, Jerry, I need 10% of that. I said, don't worry, I got you. But it's just the fact of meeting people and connecting. That's what the experience is all about mm -hmm. and, and helping each other. So, yeah, I'm traveling different countries. I, I'm i going to uh, Mexico in February again. I'm going to Colombia to host a huge workout in Cartagena and Medellin. Cartagena that's going to be great. Yes, I've never been. So, been. you know. It's that's going to be something epic that I, you know, that I'm looking forward to, and it's going to different countries every month now. I partnered up with people in Puerto Vallarta in Mexico. I just got featured today in one of the magazines, Fitness Health magazine. Super excited! Somebody said, "Jerry, you're not showing emotions." I said, "Because it's not done. The job is not done. I'm doing something for my daughter. I have a 15 year old daughter." 15? Yeah, 15. I'm 36 years old. You know, black don't crack. But you know, I just keep myself well. I don't stress out. No grays. No receding hairlines. I just stay focused. Pray. Manifest. Be a father. I'm a single dad on top of that. I, lo my, I lost my child's mom when my daughter was born. So that shaped me on a different platform. Oh, so that's what wow. I kind of tell people. I said, things that you see right now in the world, you can't tell me anything. Because I'm on a different type of frequency. So that right there created the fire. Me being a single father. She literally, it was like an exchange of life. Cause she, yes, she exactly. 
She passed. Having... She passed, and she gave me life. She gave me something which was a blessing. So it allowed me to basically look up to her and say, "Hey, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do every day, and it's gonna make me and her a better person." At the end of the day. How are you with your daughter? Oh, we, we listen. She hates working out. Number one, um, beautiful as well. I mean, she's getting to be more independent, and it's scaring me because I'm like, man, mm-hmm. you know, you get them at the, you get them in the crib, and you're looking at them, and like you're trying to wake up, you know, to them stay up because it's three o'clock in the morning. They're crying, feeding them, and everything. You're trying to rock them. You're trying to read your notes for clients and stuff like that. So I'm doing daddy daycare type of thing. Mm-hmm. Trying to get the hair done with the buns and all that stuff. But as you get older, man, you know what? I'm going to take you to get your hair nails done and everything. So we do, you know, we get our nails done. She gets her hair done. We go running, hiking. We play basketball. Um, she's more into the science art texture. Mm-hmm. She loves to draw, which is great. I would never pressure her to be a fitness person. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever she wants to do, I'm going to be all for it. So we have a great relationship, a great bond. She hates when I travel because I have to go for work. But she was asking me, Jerry, where you going? Daddy, where are you going right now? So I got an interview. I got an interview. I'll be back. I'll be back. Be back. <laughs> you know. And you're holding it down. You're doing a fantastic job. Thank you. Um, how can everybody at home get in contact with you? Because that's so important. Yes. Well, you can follow me at Jerry R. Joseph on Instagram. My um, website is being rebranded. So you can just follow me at Jerry R. Joseph on Instagram. You can email me at J- the Jerry Joseph Fitness uh, Experience at gmail.com. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. You can DM me. I'm going to respond whether you have 100 followers. Because I kind of feel like followers don't make you. Do, do not. Well, we know that could Blue be checks don't make there's all these Right. There's all these things and everything like that. But they don't make you. You make yourself. I spoke, I spoke with somebody that had 100 followers. They felt like, oh, my God, I can't believe you're having a conversation with me. Mm-hmm. We're all human. We bleed the same. At the end of the day, it's all, it's all, it's it's, just all it's in one nice connected. It's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. Exactly. That's what I said. That's what I, I live by. I'm about to use that line. I like that. It's true, though. It's true. It's so true. When mm-hmm. I meet, I've, had, I've been in the room with people of position of power, and I didn't know who they were. And the fact that they took the time... And me not knowing who they were and then finding out after. Because you can give me something that I can use that I never thought about. Vice versa. And it's not about it's not about racing. It's about basically coming together and finally communicating and just building as we supposed to. That's what's gonna help the world change. Yeah. At the end of the day. Like titles mean nothing. You could lose all of that in two seconds. And it'll mean absolutely nothing. nothing. You'll be just another person that people forgot. So you better be... Humble. Humble, thankful. You know, I always try to give thanks. You know, I've seen my progression. I've seen... I've had peaks and valleys. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, but always just, you know, giving thanks and just remembering, you know. Because you never know. Somebody might need it. Just to be like, hey, everything's going to be okay. Oh, you know what? You did a good job today. You don't even know me. But don't worry about it. You did a good job today. That right there could change somebody's whole life, their whole demeanor. Just saying, good morning, or thank you. Recognizing, saying I appreciate you, thank you. You know, I work with a whole lot of creative teams, Mm -hmm. um, and yes, it's their job to create the banner ads or Mm -hmm. whatever. Still go into our group chat, like, thank you guys, you guys kicked it. We crushed it, client was happy, thank you. Mental health is big now, especially when it comes to fitness. Releasing your endorphins. That's why I advise everybody to continue to keep working out, whether it's going for a walk or a jog or even going to the gym and not even knowing what to do. Just go in the gym, touch the equipment, and then walk back out. <laughs> and then come back and do it again. If it takes you, like, it's, it's just it's just keep, keep being able to live, have longevity. We got to live longer. We got to do better. We got to basically work out in order for us to basically continue to keep that lifeline going. I want, no. to, I want to be 70, 80 years old, fit. Man, how old are you? 90. Damn. <laughs> you know, like, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I see some older ladies at the gym who are clearly 60 plus <laughs> bodies. Like, for a 60-year-old, everything tight. Like, yes, they're mature. You see the grades right. and everything. But 
everything on point. And I'm like, come on now. I want, I want that to be me. You want that to be? It will be. Twenty, you. thirty years. It will be you. I started working out. I was fifteen. Wow. I was so young. My mother had a sign because now it's like, sadly, kids got bigger and bigger. So now twelve and up, you could be. But before fourteen, fifteen, you needed parental supervision. You do, but now. You can take your kids to the gym yeah. and just sign a waiver. But it wasn't a thing then, you know. So you had to work it out. You had to, but it's, it came from me because I wanted it. Right. And, and we got. I've be, always been vibrating on my own. But this is the opportunity for us to let the world know and the youth know that is really important because we need real role models to help these kids understand the importance of taking care of themselves absolutely well jerry we're gonna have you back for part two because there's so much we could unpack with you <laughs> right um so i definitely would love to have you back yes i would love to be back perfect and as always if you have any questions or comments you can send us an email at info at beyond i'm your host lydia patel thank you so much for joining us and we'll be back again next week same time same place you're watching beyond focus tv stay with us beyond focus tv show wants and needs your feedback did we blunder Please let us know so we can improve. Was the show helpful to you? Drop us a note so we can share the success with our staff members. Is there something you think we could do better? We welcome new ideas and new approaches to old ideas. Do you have a great suggestion? Let us know and we'll work on it. If you would like to share your comments anonymously, please send us an email at info at beyondfocusmedia.com. If you want to get in touch with the executive producer directly, send him an email at gene at beyondfocusmedia.com. We really look forward to hearing from you.